Hey guys, this is Larkin Wilson, Media Manager here at Anglers All, and today I'm gonna to give you a quick update on what the high country is looking like in the front range. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about lakes and streams, mostly in places like Indian Peaks Wilderness, James Peak, Mount Evans, and Rocky Mountain National Park. Places a little bit closer to home within that two to three hours max range. I don't claim to be, nor does the rest of our team claim to be the end all be all experts on the high country here in the front range, but we have a lot of experience between myself, Rachel, Colin, Blake, and a few of the other team members. We really get after it during the summer months and we spend a lot of time up in the high country. So this video is gonna be based more on our experiences and what we've seen thus far this year. Both sides of the continental divide have been fishing well. Any elevation that you go to really even up to 12.5, it's wide open at this point. So iced off, lakes are clear, roads are clear, roads are open. You know, most of that stuff opened up July 15th. It's been a good summer so far for high country fishing. The water's looking great. The levels are nice. All the runoff out of those mountain cirques has really funneled down into both the beaver ponds, all the little feeder streams and the lakes themselves. One thing to note about this year is that it's been especially hot and the heat started earlier in the year than it usually does. So by early June, we're seeing lakes up to 10 and a half thousand feet that are completely iced off, which they shouldn't be there for a few more weeks, maybe even up to a month. It would appear that the opportunity for these fish to feed and grow is slightly longer than it is on other years. Lakes that might be open July to September or have now been open from early June to September, and that entire extra month is gonna mean a lot. I'm sure some of you guys have noticed that the fish are slightly more selective. Now don't get me wrong, trout are opportunistic by nature and they're gonna eat something if it looks like food and it lands in their face, but it seems like they're a little more selective, especially at higher pressured lakes or lakes without vegetation around the edges where it's really wild. Wide open. Fish will either sit in around 12 inches of water or 12 feet of water and there doesn't seem to be much in between. So at every lake you have to treat it a little bit differently, right? And I think the theme for this summer when it comes to the high country is adapt or die. If you're not willing to adapt to the situation on hand, you're not gonna catch fish. You have to be able to switch things up dynamically throughout the day because these fisheries are dynamically changing throughout the day and you can't just do the same thing all day and expect consistent results. The trout eat different things throughout the day. There's different food sources at different times throughout the day. They're in different parts of the lake at different hours. It evolves so quickly that you have to evolve with it if you wanna catch fish. So keeping in mind that we had an earlier start to the high country season, we need to adjust accordingly. But each lake you go to, you need to take the time, get up on a higher elevation if you can, and watch the water and try to figure out where the fish are holding. Are they holding super deep or are they holding up in the shallows? And then you can go from there. If fish are holding shallow within that couple of feet of water near the shore, that's where you're getting into more double dry fly, single dry fly, or dry dropper territory. It just really depends on the depth and what's down there. If you're dealing with a lot of vegetation on the bottom, don't have a heavy dropper that's gonna drop down and snag and then spook all those fish when you try to yank it out. If you notice fish coming up and snubbing your dry flies when you have dry dropper rigs or double dry fly rigs, go ahead and cut off that tag and fish the single dry see what happens. Something I've been doing at the lake this summer is putting trout into three different categories, right? So we have our cruisers, our risers, and our sippers. And I put trout in these categories because I'm trying to figure out what to feed them, right? If I'm seeing cruising fish a couple of feet down or somewhere within the shoreline, I'm gonna tie on a dry dropper rig with something that I can drop right down into their faces of where they're cruising to try to catch their attention. If I'm seeing trout coming up and sipping things from the surface, not really breaking the water necessarily, but sort of porpoising and I'm seeing swirls here and there. I'm assuming that those are ants drowning or that they're mayflies emerging. 
And either way, I'm gonna fish something within an inch or so of the surface film. Remember, ants have waxy bodies, they repel water. So they settle down into the film compared to caddis, which will skitter along on the surface. And then we got the risers. When I'm seeing rising fish, I'm looking for splashy flops up on the surface, fish noses, stuff like that. If I start seeing risers, I'm assuming they're probably eating caddis or some sort of terrestrials like a hopper or a beetle. I'm gonna put something up on the surface with probably a double dry fly rig, a big terrestrial up front like a grasshopper or a beetle, followed by a smaller terrestrial or a caddis, right? Either an ant, a beetle, a regular elk hair caddis or a goddard caddis have been uh, fantastic flies this summer. But again, the key strategy has been adapting the situations on the water as they unfold. As they progress throughout the day, you're gonna be seeing different stuff and you have to be able to adapt on the fly. Some of the best flies that we've seen this year for fishing in the high country have been leeches in an olive color. So flies like a Hellraiser leech, Rally's Balance leech, squirrel leeches, stuff like that. The other go-to bug this summer has been ant patterns. Uh, bugs like the flying ant, the glow ant, and the ant acid from Kelly Gallup. There's been a lot of ants up in the high country that I'm seeing. Black ants, red ants, flying ants, wingless ants. Having a wide variety of these bugs that you can throw to match any kind of terrestrial you're finding out there. But most importantly, the specific ants that these fish are eating, because when you find that right pattern, they're just gonna hit it every single time. And it's, it's fantastic to watch, but as the summer progresses, we're gonna start to see bigger and bigger bugs. Grasshoppers start early in the year in a much smaller nymph stage without wings and then grow as the summer progresses, right? So as we progress into August, we're gonna see grasshoppers start to get bigger and bigger. Right now at higher elevations, they're in sort of that 14 to 16 range, so really small baby boy hopper style flies. But as we get a little bit warmer and the days get a little bit longer, we're gonna see grasshoppers get even larger and it's gonna get into more of a 12 to a size eight. I like to tell people in general, stay with a box of hoppers in a size six to a size 16 and then you can cover all your bases. So as far as the high country fly fishing season goes here in the front range of Colorado, really it could not get any better. We are in the prime time right now and now is the time to get up into the high country and get after it. These lakes are not going to be open forever. Neither are the mountain streams that can just be a blast to fish. So take the time, go up into the high country if you're able and get after a few fish. If you have any questions or need any info, please reach out to us, give us a call here at the shop. We're more than happy to help. This is what we love to do and hopefully you guys got something out of this. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.